Hi, my name is Becky Thompson. I want to thank you for tuning in virtually to the Interdisciplinary Social Science Conference on Resilience and Change in World History in Oxford, England. Thank you to the organizers who welcome poetry to this academic conference, moving beyond gated enclaves in intellectual life. I'm speaking with you from Lesbos, Greece, a tiny island with four terrains, the high desert, forest, farmland, and the shoreline. The very crossroads between Turkey and Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. And I speak to you specifically from this place. To the left is the hot springs, and to the right is Manolis, a taverna that became like a mash unit during the per period of history I'm talking about. Partly because I wanted you to see how close Lesbos is from Turkey, which is not even 10 kilometers from here. That space in the Aegean Sea is the very center of a crossing for over one million people in 2015 and continuing as rafts, some rafts are still making it across. Families risking their lives to save their lives on Flimley rafts who then w walked from here across the island to Mytilene, about 65 kilometers because there was no transportation at that time. What was called in the media the refugee crisis, I came to understand is the biggest multiracial, multilingual, multiethnic peace march in modern history. These poems that I'm sharing with you today are from my forthcoming collection called To Speak in Salt, with nods to Sappho, Minoan pots, and silhouettes crossing the burning sun. It draws on my meeting rafts. 2015, 16, and 17, walking and teaching poetry, walking with people, teaching poetry in several different refugee centers in Athens and Thessaloniki and Mytilene, and then working with asylum seeking activists. I welcome your comments, your both written and verbal ways of communicating with each other. The lead witnesses in these poems include the sand, willing to hold a raft's imprint until the next high tide keys from houses in Syria kept on rings under diapers in a satchel, satchel carried or thrown overboard if a raft is sinking, poetry climbing mountain passes tucked into the Quran sung in verse, Lesvos made from a volcano, Lepitimnos quiet now, Moria the biggest refugee center in Europe housed in Lesvos that burned to the ground in October 2020. Emmy, a Greek chef who snuck families across the island in her van before dawn. Dots, little tiny dots that got a little bit bigger to the size of almonds, then got a little bit bigger, and then we could see hands and we could see people. And on our side, we would wave our arms up and down and up and down, and they would wave their arms up and down and up and down as an invisible wire connected us as they made it safely to shore. And fire leaps across tents, devours passports, pacifiers, date meat, olive trees, and shade. This first is from a series of poems, a sequence of poems called The Sea Share Salt with the Breeze. One, the poppies stand at attention like stop signs among twisted life jackets, cut up water bottles, men's pants strewn across surprised hills. It's true, the road is drenched in light. Cassandra rolls up a tattered raft, stacks baby life jackets the size of juice cartons, the orange still inflated. A family inches toward Molivos tells us they silence the motor to muffle their landing. Rain threatens the blue expanse, the sea chants. Two, they tell me we chanted. Our raft took in water like an upside down umbrella. We stayed still, zipped up our breath until we reached sand our lips dried roses. Xenos in Greece means, in Greek means foreigner and guest. Police caution, walk west, no shelter here. Our eyes paint forward. Three, their shoes walk, I sleep awake. My mind confuses 
helicopter blades for fishing boats, a buzzing refrigerator for motorcycles. When a light zigzags across black glass, I wave a lantern in big sweeps above my head to guide the silhouettes to shore. We share chai and plum toast, families walk, babies in arms at the back. This island, a canopy, each raft, a nation. Five. Tired sun, cancel rough sea days. Our eyes count white caps. A man in a torn wetsuit drags a dinghy to shore, bills all wet. Scavengers eat bananas. Rusty pickups haul engines to sell in Ismir. A father lifts his newborn to Allah. Everybody cheers. Girls in Kmart sweat shirts with smartphones ask about Sylvester Stallone. At night, I pass food through open shutter windows, toss water bottles. Eight, numbers dizzy the stars. One million walk across the border, two million hover to cross, three million in transit, four million stuck, five million prey, six million killed in the Holocaust. Germany, the refugees' goal, this paradox. Elie Wiesel wondered if God died in Auschwitz. I want to ask the boy who fills a baseball cap with cool water, the man in Karatepe as he observes Salat, sewage a street beside him, the mother deaf from a barrel bomb who collapsed on the beach then hoisted herself up, dressing her daughter in a pink Madeline hat, the family who outsmarted the smugglers, found their own raft stuck underneath the radar, the professor who ran alongside my car placed his only blue stone ring on my finger. The second poem speaks to conversations among family members about how to stay sane while waiting in limbo, sometimes months and now often years, in order to find, if possible, asylum. Ahmed talks to his 13-year-old brother. Remember, you are Superman with a hurt-proof cape. Don't forget your aunt nicknamed you Balloon, he who will float above danger. Learn to draw a map of Syria in ink on paper cups. Don't look at the sea if it makes you sad. Look at the sea and remember you made it. Be the song you sang on the raft. Don't run from ghosts. Use your backpack as a pillow, a seat, a table. Carry your prayer rug inside. It's okay to let the rug double as a bed. Eat meals with young Palestinians. They've been through this longer than you have. Keep ironing your shirts even though you have to stand in line. Know your people are proud. Remember why they sent you first. Don't trade toothpaste for cigarettes. Well, maybe sometimes. Don't sell your kidney to anyone, ever. Remember your uncle before the sniper. Be tall. Know you come from a people of maps and stars. Learn how to be a barber. Wherever you go, men will need their haircut. Don't drink bleach. Don't drink bleach. This poem comes from uh, teaching in Mytilene in Lesbos and references a litany for survival, uh, a signature poem by Audre Lorde, one of the poems that Nawit Balki, who is a professor in Afghanistan and was here in transit, translated into Dari on big paper that we put up on the walls. A litany travels. The translator says, let's turn to a litany for survival. We'll say it first in Dari, then English, all together. Ready? Did I mention I'm over my head? Or perhaps my head continues to fly about, but my spine has folded in. When did this accordion behavior begin? Was it when we had chairs for 15 and 25 came, not counting the children? Or was it when I passed around an attendance sheet that came back with six signatures, fear buried their pens? Was it after we read a haiku and a father said, how can we write pretty poems? Our lives are not pretty, as his three-year-old daughter drew on her arm with a purple marker. Or was it when I couldn't outline the basic shape of Afghanistan on the board? Someone came up, 
drew his country and all the ones that touch it? Was it when shutters we opened so the small room could breathe kept banging each time pulling people from their chairs? An older man rose and gently closed the shutters. Or was it when a teenager clutching her friend sandwiched between men like fish said she liked the poem about memories and backpacks, wished it was in Somali? I said, me too. Or was it when the father explained his family receives 300 euro each month? If they're granted asylum, that will end after six months. Or was it when I was sure two teens who stared into their phones were there for the free bus tickets until they recited brilliant land days in Dari and English? They wrote them on Google Translate. What about the seven-year-old who answered all my questions in English before the adults, their eyes stuck on the table, the table floating with cherry pits left by the four-year-olds? There is no childcare at this refugee center. Parents hold their children close, won't let them go farther than their side vision. Their eyes reach in all directions. The Afghan filmmaker declares, I'd rather not hear the word refugee ever again. He asks, what would happen if every time you hear the word refugee, you whisper, no, you shout the word people? What about the woman who, after I blah, 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 about writing to tell the truth says, with all due respect, no one can speak honestly as long as we are here. This next poem is a ghazal, which is dedicated to Fadwa Suleiman, who is a beloved Syrian poet activist who was forced into exile in 2012. We have taken the one in the sky as our witness. In your right hand, hold the color of the tribes. In the left, a pencil that erases state borders. With the color of dawn, you can cross over. A merciful God turns a mirror on borders. For if you have crossed, so have we all. Skin is an organ that refuses all borders. We plant petunias in fallen white helmets. The scent travels past bullets, slips around borders. Alawites in Aleppo, my family strewn about. I know the moon cancels night borders. If you are worried, grasp a skein of sunlight so torture won't seep into your body's borders. They call me Fadwa Suleiman. My poems, no borders. My body from Paris to the sky, an elegant border. This poem is called uh, Teaching Poetry at Kora, and it's where I met Abba Shiki, uh, a poem, uh, poet who wrote in the workshop, whose poem was then the lead poem in an edited book called Making Mirrors, writing, writing by and for refugees that I co-edited with Jahan de Siso teaching poetry at Cora. Praise this standalone building in Athens for its ingenuity. Praise the class when their collective poem majors and minors in despair. Praise another class when their poem conjures up carousels. Praise the man from Cote d'Ivoire who asks, I have no time to write about my past. Praise him again when he says, I have no time to write about my future. Praise the Eritrean woman who glances at the door when I ask if she speaks Farsi. Praise the mural on the, glass, on the classroom wall who got carried away with color. Praise the teenager who wrote, they shot us as if we were deer. Praise the soldier from Syria who asked, can we write about anything even if it's scary? Praise the teenager who wrote haiku about his eight cousins. My mother became their mother not enough to go around. Praise the artist who wrote in Arabic, the sea did not save my memories or my paintings. Praise the Syrian woman who wrote, the white post box stood alone, the bomb took everything else. Praise the man from Sierra Leone who leans in, this one in the story who lost his whole family was me. Praise the 12 year old who whispers, I carry my soul in my hands. Praise the mother who wrote, 
I sleep with the sea, I do not sleep. At a period of time, uh, a few years ago, when no poems were coming out, I reached to some of the advice from my mentor, uh, the sage Sonia Sanchez, who writes a haiku each day. And so for 90 days, I wrote haiku, and these are three of them. Haiku questions. Is a poem really a poem if it's written on someone else's back? Can there be any refugee poetry that's not by refugees? Who owns words if they are in the sea? Can dolls speak? Can they talk once they wash ashore? This poem is an acrostic, which is a poem which means that the title is then spelled down the page. So the first word, the first letter of every line starts with one of the letters in the title. It's in honor of the LGBT organizing, uh, some of the most vulnerable and creative people coming across on rafts uh, are from the LGBT community and it speaks to a vibrant underground party that was hosted by LGBT asylum seekers and their friends in Athens. Squatters writes, Squatting in an abandoned building in Exaria Square, Kwamar and Shamir up the ante of who can shimmy faster, unlock their hips to the jerry-rigged sound system as the gay chef from Syria orchestrates a four-course dinner that will stretch to feed 50. An Afghan couple wanders in their toddler dancing with a transgender woman with eyes that tell us, my sisters and I risked the raft. Ravages of poems now behind us, a hole in the boat the size of my fist. We filled with singing until we were rescued. Paris's burning travels to Athens on a dinghy. Inclusion, the mantra folded into tabuli. Parsley translates from Arabic to Urdu. Gracious a verb, everyone is granted as the bass from the sound system hijacks old fear. Temporary becomes an excuse for let's party. Community travels with tattoos and silk scarves. The toddler sleeps in the crook of an arm as silence equals death transforms into eyes from this storm. A Coast Guard officer asks, months after walking with families to the harbor where Yanni Papadakis handwrites the names of each newcomer, sometimes patient with Arabic and Farsi, sometimes wound up, no words between us, my actions perfectly illegal, his work perfectly legal, 300,000 registered, his belt empty of a weapon, no billy club or gun. Yanni turns to me, says in Greek English, I have just one question. Why do police in America shoot their own citizens on the street in the middle of the day at night? Fred Hampton's spirit explains Michael Brown testifies, I stutter. The two questions that people coming off the rafts ask me most commonly in 2015 and 16 were, what island are we on and are there any guns here? What island are we on is because when they were pushed off, when they got into the rafts, the smugglers pushed them away and said, go that direction. But the currents, and the sea and the tides and the riptides would often take them way out of where they thought they were coming. So they wanted to know if they got to Lesbos. And the second question, are there guns here, is because they were coming from a place of many guns. As I was writing, once I was back in the United States, from a country that has more guns than there are people in the country. In the arc of lost time, blue holes gather. In the arc of lost time, blue holes gather all the sea cannot bear. The consciousness of those who made it and did not. The strait between Turkey and Lesbos, the whale's mouth, the rafts, whale's teeth, the water and its power to decide. I return like I never left, asking, were you there? 
Their hours of terror lasted longer than a lifetime. Inside the whale, time absorbs a new dimension. Birth and death collide. The clock slows down and speeds up. Demands we find words vanished from the world, like the Battle of Dunkirk, the Sand Creek Massacre, the beating of a child, that we weave memory into quilts, Rumi's couplets, Weiwei's human flow. Art cannot bring back the dead, honor too big a word for poets to earn, more like humble moments we are caught inside. We try to shrink horror into something new, so much lost when people leave their homelands, to lose words more than we can live with, like a two-tailed swallow returning to the sea over and over, not done. And then the last poem is from the point of view of this island, an island of refugees, including people here now in their 80s who lost many family members when they were forced from Turkey to Lesbos in the early 1920s. And the poem is in the shape of the island that's after Zen Jokadar, whose beautiful novel, The Map of Salt and Stars, is one I would highly recommend. Lesbos. When I was born, a glacier carved my shape like a winter tulip so I could still see Anatolia. My eight sisters, each a tortoise shell for the gods. I am my mother's daughter here before the volcanoes let loose. Lava domes are now castles to the sky. Sea of my dreams with your fierce moods and sequin days. I am the poet's land where the people rotated crops like verses in holiday hymns. There was a time when men were pretty and women were strong. There was a time before the Byzantines and the Ottomans, when gargoyles cavorted with cats who mated and then slept. Sea of my dreams, I long for boats that bring tilapia and cod, for beaches that sing rain, recycle wind with long breath, when the moonflower shines, the moment will awaken your spine. As long as you come, you are welcome. Flamingos will be waiting, an early mist. Night shades so black they shimmer. Sea of my dreams, welcome all who come to my shores. As olive trees reach from China to Australia, so do my arms. This island is too big. This island is too small. There is always room. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the people here who helped make this video possible. May peace and justice reign throughout the world.